Welcome back you beautiful people, we are Gemma and Campbell and this week we might just have found the best wild swimming spot along all of the wild Atlantic Lake. That water is so clear. Ah, oh, this is a life. High five! <laughs> If you're new around here, then this washing machine on wheels is our little home called Ellie, who we have recently brought on her first international trip with us across the Irish Sea to the beautiful and extremely rugged land of the Wild Atlantic Way. After arriving into Belfast and spending some time on the coast of Northern Ireland, last week we headed west to begin our Irish road trip, touring sites such as the incredible Sleeve League and finishing off our journey with a breathtaking view near the small town of Bundoran. This week we continue our journey south along the Wild Atlantic Way and find what might just be our favourite Sea swimming spot yet on the rugged coastline of Ireland. If you're new around here and want to see more of what van life on the Wild Atlantic Way has to offer, then hit that subscribe button and join the gang. But for now, let's check back into a sunrise over the beautiful Tullinstrand Beach in County Donegal. Well, is that not just a park up with one hell of a view? Absolutely cracker of a day today. I tell you, there was a definite temperature shift last night. I don't know if it was just the first night that's been clear in a long time, but we woke up this morning and I almost felt as if it was like an autumn morning already. Like I could almost see my breath. My nose was feeling cold. And yeah, when we went outside, we just went out for a quick run back, having some breakfast. And yeah, it's definitely a lot fresher than what it has been the past few days. Well, it's just as well we did actually get up early and go for a run this morning because there's no long lies around this camping spot. There's a surf camp company right next door and I'm already up having a big party. As we're heading further south, the landscape is just getting more and more rugged. Like we've got these big tabletop mountains over on our left here and they just look so impressive, especially like today is kind of low clouds, the clouds are proper come in. And yes, I'm hoping that the landscape just keeps getting more wild like this because it is reminding me more and more of Scotland, it's beautiful. And isn't this just every local's favourite site? We've got a convoy of three motorhomes. Convoy! So what is on the menu for today, baby? I have absolutely no idea what it's called, but it's going to be a kind of gyro type thing. We've basically, we've got some hummus, we've got some falafel. We couldn't really find any like normal breads to put it in, so we've gone for naan bread. So we're going to try that with a bit of salad and some peppers. I know that is absolutely so far from a gyro, but we're going to see how it goes. Close it, enough. It sounds like it's going to be really nice, so we'll see. A little bit of luxury for lunch, as always, got a soda stream. We love this thing. I know. I didn't even know that they existed until like... Brilliant in a van. Although, story of our lives, it seems like we've run out of gas. I know. We just love that saying, don't we? <laughs> if it's not bloody propane, it's carbon dioxide. Come on! We have also actually driven south all the way down to the town of Sligo because we thought that that rain wasn't really passing and literally as soon as we arrived into here, it stopped and it's looking to be quite a nice day now actually. But we've got this beautiful little park up spot right by the river. It was on park for a night, people were saying that they'd spent the night here. So yeah, we reckon we might just actually stay here for tonight and go a little wander down into town later on. Oh. Start loading them up. That looks very good. We'll go for, instead of a gyro, we're going to go for a falafel flatbread. Yeah? Yeah. On an anvil? Yeah, yeah, that looks very good. <laughs> I'll take that. Honestly, get yourself a soda stream. Okay. Bit dry. Uh, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> One of the things that we're finding so difficult about coming back to van life is the last couple of months when we've been living in Ellie, we're obviously running around doing these research projects, I guess, for the two books that we're writing. And it's trying to transition back into the stage where we're not just constantly bam, 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 hitting up a new site every single day and learning that we can actually just take a day off, chill out somewhere such as the town of Sligo, go for a little wander and not be constantly thinking about what are we videoing, what are we photographing, what are we researching, but we're getting there. I think. Yeah. It's been a tough tra transition actually, hasn't it? Because I feel like we've been on the go so quick for so long, but we are getting there. It feels good. It feels good to start like relaxing a little bit. We have the keys? Yes, they're in the pannier. Okay, let's go. It's also not a bad little park up spot because it's a really easy cycle straight into the city centre of Sligo. So. 
So this is Sligo Abbey, which dates back to about 1252, and it sits right in the town centre of Sligo. And the history here is really quite fascinating, and some of it really quite dark. So I think it normally costs five euros to actually come in and have a wander around the abbey, but it's free today because they've got works ongoing, so that's always good, saving a bit of yeah, money. Yeah, it's a lucky day. And we've got a little leaflet to guide ourselves around. So where do we start? Go down the stairs, I think. Yeah, like arrow, obviously. This is quite creepy, isn't it? Mm. So that tombstone back there had an inscription of the word Bobby, okay. but it was spelt wrong, so it was like B-O-B-Y, and it's like been interpreted over the years as like baby, so baby James, who the tombstone belongs to, and apparently the story goes that he haunts this abbey. Ooh, creepy. Creepy story. And so this abbey actually played a pretty crucial part of one of Sligo's darkest times. It was in the 19th century and it was a massive cholera outbreak and they actually couldn't keep up with the number of bodies that were being brought to the cemetery here. So they started burying the bodies not deep enough and it was just like bones and body parts and everything for years to come all around the cemetery sticking out the ground. And it was even tales of people being buried alive here to try and stem the actual outbreak of cholera at that time. So I'm not entirely surprised that their stories about it being haunted because it sounds pretty creepy. That is <laughs> We had actually planned on sleeping here tonight, but after a quick look on our Park for Night app, there seems to be somewhere even better, just a 15 minute drive away. Wow. <laughs> this is a spacious spot. I know, all to ourselves. First time since arriving in Ireland that no one else has been here. Dabby cheeky and just take up the whole spot. <laughs> Get some bedroom views. Wow. Now, I feel like I've already said this in this video, but is this not just the most scenic park up yet? Like, Ireland just keeps surprising us. I can't believe it's literally taken us 15 minutes to go from the town centre of Sligo and come to this pure isolated paradise. It's just, those waves down there are gonna be just so lovely when we're lying in bed here tonight because we're the only ones here. There's a very quiet road behind us and the views that we're gonna get from our bedroom window, which is right there, are just gonna be spectacular tomorrow morning. That cloud, however, has been chasing us ever since we left Sligo. We got some blue skies and I was like, oh, it's looking up, baby, but now, not so much. I reckon it's gonna downpour soon. Oh, wow. You can't have it both ways in Ireland, though. You've either got the views or you've got the rain. What did you just say? Ireland weather 25 degrees C, hot plume to follow washout weekend as met Erin Erin forecast. Big weather U turn. Well, fingers crossed. Yeah, how about that? It is, that would be nice. It's not looking. Oh, it's actually blue skies over there just now. Literally all morning it's been raining, so cross your fingers for us, guys. Hopefully we can get a bit more summer. I'm not ready for winter just yet. absolutely stunning it's so rugged around here it's really remote there's not really any houses or anything you come down this like single track road and you're just around this raw beauty and it is just absolutely stunning and that just over in the distance over there is the very fairy tale looking Mullogmore castle which it looks absolutely beautiful it's got a proper little spire coming at the top and it overlooks the bay very very rugged looking i will say though the temperatures have definitely dropped it's feeling very fresh and windy around here at the moment isn't it definitely it's not a summer's day anymore. Ah, uh, it's cold. Looking on Google Maps, however, it looks as if there's a pool that almost looks like the Venus pools in Lehigh Island in Guernsey. Fancy a swim? Yeah, that looks nice. Shame we don't have the clear golden weather that they do in these photos, but yeah, we keep raining, so we're wet out. anyway. Yeah, true. Yeah. Three, two, one. All right, let's do this. 
Honestly, I say let's go with so much enthusiasm as if I'm not just going to be screaming in about five minutes anyway. There's loads of people. Well, I can see a lot of people down there. So I don't know if anyone's swimming there. Spot. Yeah. There is actually a lot of people in swimming in there. Huh? Hey, brave pants on. I know. So this pool is called the Bishop's Pool and it sits right up the end of Malagbor Head. It looks absolutely beautiful at low tide and high tide because at low tide it's this proper little, little rock pool where I think on a sunny day it might actually retain some heat. That water is so clear. I can't tell if the tide's actually coming in or going out at the moment. Question is, is it warm? Oh. Gemma just said to me, I wish I could tell you the water's warm. Why would you say that? <laughs> Come on. It's actually not that cold. Oh, well done. Oh my God, that is cold. <laughs> 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 Oh, big jump, guys! Get it out! Oh, didn't mean to go under. Oh, this is a life. What do you do when it rains? Get wet anyway. Yeah, go for a swim. <laughs> I do think the best part about rock pools like this is because the open ocean is looking so choppy out there today, but in there is flat and it's as calm as a swimming pool, so it's like the perfect place. If you want to go for a dip, like this is a perfect place for it. I think Ireland's definitely starting to show us her true colours. It's just <laughs> horrible, smeary rain, and it doesn't look like it's going to be stopping anytime soon, does it, babe? That looks like a song for the rest yeah, of the day. So I feel like even the weather for like the whole of the UK and Ireland is looking like this for the next week. We are then hoping we'll get a break in it, but we're not used to this, are we? All of a sudden, we've been spoiled. I know, very spoiled. <laughs> We are parked up just outside of the town of Sligo. Now the reason that we are actually parked up here again is because the signal is just not doing us any good to be honest. Yeah, I don't know what it is, but since we got to Ireland, our signal has just been not great. We got one SIM card, which we've put into Campbell's phone, and I'm just hotspotting off that. But even still, it's even though it's an Irish SIM card, it's just not giving us great signal. So we have a little bit better signal in the town centre of Sligo. But when you're running your own business, you really need internet to get the work done, and it has been difficult, hasn't it? It has. It's been an absolute nightmare. And like, you know, we've got deadlines fast approaching. We're desperately trying to get work done, plus go out and film, plus make the most of the sunshine and yeah it's proven <laughs> rather difficult. Tonight we are having a nice easy option we're really buzzing about it because we've not had something like this for ages. We have got not to get out the packaging so I can't be dramatic but we've got corn chicken burgers and we're gonna make cut up some potatoes and make some chips. So we actually have two different kinds of burgers We've got these ones, which I had for lunch in a wrap, and we've got these ones, which we don't have the packaging for. This one, kind of like a traditional corn nugget, like not a lot of texture to it, but this one here, honestly, if you gave that to someone that ate meat, you would think it's like chicken. The texture of it is like quite uncanny, which sometimes I'm like, that's really good because it shows like there's more options for people that do want to eat chicken, but sometimes I'm eating it and I'm just like, is that veggie or is that not? Because I can't actually tell. What, what, what did you just ask? What is in the foil down here? The foil down there, I think that is the weak old wraps that we had in our fajitas oh. about a week ago that are probably grown stuff by now. It's a bit of a healthy looking fridge right now, I'm not gonna lie. Is it that is peppers? the stuff of envy for most people. Look at all of those peppers. <laughs> peppers were on a discount last time we were in Lido, it was like 50% off. And also, in case you clocked that in the background as well, yeah, we've got a bin bag sitting there because we're really struggling to find anywhere to dispose of our waste. The van's a bit of a tip just now, as usual. Now, whilst that's cooking, I thought I'd try my hand at some handiwork. Campbell's currently working a little bit on Destination Sky, so I'm gonna give this a shot on my own and see how we go. So, if you haven't noticed, Campbell and I are possibly just about as clumsy as each other. We had two sets of fairy lights, one around the front part of the van, one around the back part of the van, and both of us <laughs> managed to like slice the wire in half and break them. So now we have no fairy lights. And we were kind of missing having that nice sort of like fairy light glow, nice ambiance, you know? So we got some of these, we saw them on discount in Aldi. So I'm gonna try. This is like actually a lot harder than I first thought. Very tangled already. I'm gonna try and see if I can hang them around the bed. Cause I'm already caught in a tangle. Ah! Okay, I give up. <laughs> okay, these definitely sound like they are oh, yeah. overboiling. Does anyone else have oven gloves but then when it actually comes to handling anything hot just like not use them and use a dish towel instead? I don't know why I do that every single time. Yum! Alright, how are we looking? 
Okay. Oh, yum. Really good. The sun is just starting to set, and look, Gemma's handiwork has actually come to fruition. Look at this. How cute is that? That'd be nice for like a little date night one night, wouldn't it? I know, that is so cute. I'm really pleased with them. I think they definitely look better, like just along the back of the bed, don't you? I think so, definitely. Yeah. Since the rain has come on, I've got my guinea on and we're all tucked up and cosy in the van. We're gonna sign this video off here, guys, and we'll see you again next week. Our Wild Atlantic Way adventures will be continuing and we're really, really excited to see where we're gonna head along the coast. So if you wanna see more of that, then make sure you hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on our videos. Turn on the little bell as well. And we'll see you again next week. See ya.